we are two lessons away. There's two left. This is kind of a good graduation Sunday one as we count the troops as you take stock after 40 years of wandering in the wilderness as they're about to enter the promised land. Review, how do little sins grow into big sins? I don't know if the sound desk is awake. Here in them, because if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. Yeah, how do little sins grow into big sins? Does it seem like a big deal if you do it once? Whatever it is? Nope. As it consumes your life? And that's all you care about? Oh, I just got bigger. Yeah, it doesn't take much. Number one, why might God have wanted a census of his people? This is the Numbers 26 selected verses. After the plague, the Lord said to Moses and Eleazar, son of Aaron the priest, Take a census of the whole Israelite community by families, all those 20 years old or more who are able to serve in the army of Israel. The total number of the men of Israel was 601,730. Not one of them was among those counted by Moses and Aaron the priest when they counted the Israelites in the desert of Sinai. For the Lord had told those Israelites they would surely die in the desert. And not one of them was left except Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, son of Nun. Why might God have wanted a census of his people? What are you about to do? You are days away from the book of Joshua. Start moving back in the promised land. And are they going to let you come on in and settle? This is, this is a muster. They're, they're counting all the troops is what they're doing. And um, that, that's why they, they did the census, to see how, how big the armor was. How many were left from Sinai? I kind of tip my hand here. Maybe a better question, who, who are the three? Joshua, Caleb, and... Aaron's dead. Moses, yeah. And what's the problem with Moses? Is he going to make it in? Nope. He won't. Yeah, that's next week. The, the uh, death of Moses. And so, next question. All right. I'm not, th these don't read to you, but so Numbers 26 is what you just read, and then Numbers 2. What happened in 40 years? What's that? They, they didn't. They shrunk. They went from 603,000 in Numbers 2 to 601,000 in Numbers 26. And remember, this is just fighting age men 20 years and older. This doesn't count women and children, so double it for women, and then maybe add another 600,000 for, for, for kids. All those people died in the desert. That wandering in the wilderness, we talked about this a few weeks ago, this was a judgment on them not trusting God. And what's really wonderful about our God is that he didn't exclude them from his plan to get them to heaven. He did exclude them from his plan to get them to the promised land of Canaan. Guess what, guys? None of you get to see it. So they wandered around until they died. But the kids got to see it. Is that a lesson that they remembered? Not really. For a short time. Yes. Well, right. But not that dumb. What are you going to say, Nate? <coughs> this ant? Yeah, I thought. All right, this is Numbers 27. What happens to a sheep without a shepherd? Moses said to the Lord, May the Lord, the God of the spirits of all mankind, appoint a man over this community to go out and come in before them, one who will lead them out and bring them in, so the Lord's people will not be like sheep without a shepherd. Yeah, what happens to sheep without a shepherd? Scattered, yeah. Why do I say pray for me? If I do a lousy job, you all are slim, easy pickings. And, uh, I, yeah, I, I pray not. And I've, it's sad when a church loses or there is some, something horribly shameful that a pastor does. It can ruin a church. 
And um, it's awful. When I first came here 15 years ago, there were some people who left when St. John splintered, who left when, who was the pastor? What? No, before? Sigmund. You, was that you? Were you part of that group? You were? See, that was rough. And some people wanted nothing to do with me. I, I'm, I'm just some new kid. I just called them and we want to come back to church. They wanted nothing to do with me. Yeah, it's, it's hard. Five, <clears throat> how did Joshua and the high priest find out information from God? This is kind of interesting. You're in a theocracy. This is government by God. Take Joshua, son of Nun, a man in whom is the spirit, and lay your hand on him. Have him stand before Eliezer the priest and the entire assembly and commission him in their presence. Give him some of your authority so the whole Israelite community will obey him. He is to stand before Elias the priest who will obtain decisions for him by inquiring of the Urim before the Lord. At his command, he and the entire community of the Israelites will go out and at his command, they will come in. How did Joshua and the high priest find out information from God? We don't talk about this a whole lot. The, the, the Urim, yeah, what is that? The Urim and the Thummim. <clears throat> we don't know. We know that it had something to do with the breastplate of the high priest. It was some kind of divination where they would ask God a question and he would tell them. And as you read Joshua, they figure out what to do through this. And the one time that they don't do it, they get burned. <laughs> So, it's important to ask God. Now, nowhere does God say, bust out the Ouija board and talk to me. That's a bad idea. Run away screaming, okay? He says, you have all you need to know in my word. If you want to talk to me, pray. I'm always listening. But, uh, yeah, the God's Old Testament people could get direct answers using the Urim and the Thummim. If you see any pictures of it, and it looks like two, like, like an hourglass with two circled stones, kind of triangles in them, you're getting into a cult. That's the Mormon version of it. And Joseph Smith. It gets weird in a hurry, folks. But, uh, yeah. Number six. How can we... I already touched on it. How can we find out information from God or ask God a question? Of course, His Word and prayer. Anytime. Any other questions on this? Last week, or next week is the last one. Then we move into the very important chapters. We need to bury Moses. <laughs> if not, please say this prayer with me. Lord God, you kept your promises to your people as they wandered through the wilderness on the way to the promised land of Canaan. In the same way, keep your promises to us as we travel to the promised land of our heavenly home. Amen. There are no other announcements. God's blessings to our graduates and God's blessings to you this week.